Hello and welcome back to The Abject. Any of the five or six regular viewers of this channel will know that I talk a lot about violent films, but it's usually simulated violence or films where there's a combination of simulated and unsimulated violence like Cannibal Holocaust. But today we're getting truly objectionable and talking about the infamous shockumentary Mondo Carne, released in 1962 and directed by three deranged Italians, Giacopetti, Prosperi and Cavara. Mondo Carne is something of a documentary travelogue, taking the viewer all around the world to observe what seems to be unusual rituals or behaviours, often involving nudity, the mutilation of animals, or the mutilation of people, all of which are real and depicted quite lovingly. As I'm sure you know, Mondo Carne kicked off the subgenre of Mondo films, extreme kind of fringe documentaries dealing with violence and sexual content, especially genuine death footage. These started off as theatrical releases in the wake of Mondo Carne, but sort of spun off into direct-to-video titles like Faces of Death, Traces of Death, Faces of Gore. I think the moral issues around these sorts of things are very interesting, and that's why I wanted to talk about this film on the channel, because I think, you know, morbid curiosity is a very natural thing, and any attempt to censor or discourage that is just not going to work, because people aren't interested in seeing these things. But you can also risk breeding a sort of glib, indifferent sadism that perhaps isn't particularly healthy. So something like Mondo Carne is interesting to discuss because as much as I think it's a worthwhile film in some ways, it is very hard to justify in an ethical sense. I think at the end of the day it's all very subjective what is and isn't appropriate for any individual. Um, and to me I think I don't have a blanket rule saying this sort of thing is always bad. And Mondo Carne, I certainly think, has its positive attributes, so that's sort of where I stand. A very murky, middle ground kind of position. The first thing to say about Mondo Carne as a movie is that there are some truly striking images in it. And I don't just mean the depravity of the images, I mean the actual composition itself. This is a movie that was theatrically released and had some money behind it, and it really shows it's stunning to look at in places. Now, maybe this is extremely shallow of me to say, but I do feel that the aesthetic qualities of the movie somewhat help redeem the questionable morality. The movie turned 60 years old this year. Happy birthday, babe. But it must be said, a lot of the images are still very off-putting. Another sequence that really sticks in my memory is the ritual slaughter of some bulls near the end of the film. Uh, we see a number of their heads get chopped off and blood sprays out like a scene from Kill Bill. Now, am I glad I saw these bulls die? I think I am. I found it interesting. I didn't enjoy it, but I found it interesting. And I guess that's the question you've got to ask yourself before you watch Mondo Carne. Am I personally going to find any value in this? Something that is, I think, unintentional on the part of the filmmakers, but is a valuable part of the film, is the fact that it forces one to ask these questions of oneself. When I was watching the movie, I was saying, okay, I'm finding some of this quite interesting, but why? Should I be? I think there's value in having reflection on those questions, and as much as I don't think that was part of the design. I think it is a much more single-mindedly cynical film than that. Unintentional or not, that value to me is there. I definitely want to be clear that this film is not just morally flawed, but also cinematically flawed. As much as there's a number of fascinating sequences, there's an equal or greater number of sequences to just drag out unnecessarily. The second half of the film in particular, I think is quite leaden and could do with some serious chopping down. There's a really long section that might be, I don't know, eight or nine minutes of just drunk people milling about on the street. Obviously the movie wants us to think, wow, look at these dregs of society, but it's really, really boring. The bulls getting their heads chopped off was gross, but at least it was something to look at, you know? Speaking cynically, if you're gonna make a shockumentary, keep the shocks and fuck the rest off. This movie would be so much better if it was half an hour shorter. For me, Mondo Carne is the definition of a mixed bag. It is overlong, it is mean-spirited, morally dubious, racist, and yet there is enough value in there for me to give it a somewhat tepid recommendation. Now, if you don't want to watch Mondo Carne, I think that's absolutely fine. I don't think you're a coward or a pussy if you don't want to see it. But if you think you can take it, I'd say at least give it a go. I think it has value as both a film and a historical curio. It's a fascinating object. And I feel like my understanding of cinema is better for having seen it. It's funny, in life I am often a bit of a stuffy, finger-wagging moralist, and yet in art I am attracted to things that feel evil. In my top 10 favourite movies I have The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Antichrist, The Shining, Cannibal Holocaust, 
I would say all these films have a pervasive feeling of evil. I don't know what this says about me. Probably nothing good. Does this make me a bad person? I don't know. Do let me know in the comments. If you think I am a bad person and you want to punish me, the best way to do so is like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your unsuspecting friends, and of course get the official abject logo tattooed along the length of your penis. Make sure you film it, send it to the elderly Franco Prosperi, and maybe he'll use it in another Mondo movie.